$200. A Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventure. Now you're playing with power. Super power. You're the king, I tell you! You're king! Only for Super NES. You're listening to the SNES Podcast with your host, Soul Blazer. Hello, everybody. This is the Super NES Podcast, episode number 231. Uh, as always, I'm Greg, joined by my co-host, uh, Joe. Hello. And we want to get honored to have uh, on the podcast again with us today, a very special episode uh, episode with a flavor, flavor returning guest host, somebody who's not been here for a while. Uh, we are welcome we are welcome back to the podcast uh one of our one of our favorite hosts, and also like also our podfather, who like when you be the kind of him anyway because he runs our network. Uh, Chris, this is Adventure Island Two. Yes, Super Adventure Super Island Super Adventure Island Two. <laughs> Strangely enough, at the beginning of the game, they say this is Adventure Island Two, and I don't know you why. You are correct. <laughs> because it, yes, because the Japanese name of the game is a little bit different. So. Um, oh, the names of Adventure Island games. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> Thanks for having uh, me, is what I meant to say. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I'm also going to say it now. The actual Japanese the actual Japanese name for this game, which I'm sure I'm going to butcher, but I'll try anyway, um, is Takahashi Majin no Dakiboken, uh, Jima Tisu, which, which translates as Master Ta- Takahashi's Great Adventure Island 2. Yeah, that sounds about right. Nailed it. Because Master Higgins, because Master Higgins in Japan, like, is known as Master Taka. Takahashi. Mm. So, anyway, now that, that anyway, now, anyway, now we've covered that. Um, this was actually, this was actually, uh, um, I think originally like your idea to cover this game, Joe, because we already covered the sequel. The, uh, sorry, the, the 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 previous game like a few years ago. Yeah, so we covered this uh, the first game, Super Adventure Island. I think it was last yep. year. Um, it was that recently. Okay, I think right, it was yeah. that recently, and okay. uh, so I was like, yeah, let's. Let's play the second. I didn't even know there was a second. So I was like, okay, let's play the second. It'll be a fun little sequel. Um, This was not what I expected. (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) This is more uh, or less Wonder Boy. Just throwing that out there. Yes. (laughs) I had not played this game previously before either because I pretty much had fallen on platformers by the time this game came uh, came out. Uh, Unless it had Mario in the name, of course. So uh, this is the, but but this game is far beyond a platformer. And uh, and, uh, Chris does our cover art uh, for us to use for for, for one of the podcasts. And he he happened to mention he was, he happened to mention that he's a fan of this game. So we invited him on. I am indeed. Uh, Chris, why are you a fan of this game? (laughs) Uh, Well, I uh, loved. Super Adventure Island. Okay. Hold on. I'm actually bringing up a uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet that I made a while back. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, the, the, it's it's about Wonder Boy. Um, I did uh, Dan and I on the Stone Age Gamer podcast did a an attempt at breaking down how to make sense of the Wonder Boy series, mm, and it required luck. a massive <laughs> spreadsheet. Yeah. It is fascinating. But anyways, yes. um. When the Super Nintendo first came out, I never played Adventure Island on NES. I never played Wonder Boy on Master System. Uh, but I played Super Adventure Island when my friend Greg got a Super Nintendo. And I was like, this is freaking cool. So I was a huge fan of Super Adventure Island. And then I went back and played Not some me, of the NES games. I probably should just say that. <laughs> that that's, that's fair. Uh, I really liked the, it was It was the music. You know, I really liked the music. I loved mm. how, how bright the visuals were. The game itself, I wasn't the biggest fan of playing the game. But I was so enamored with the visuals and the sound that it that kept me going through it. Like, I mean, those bosses were so cool looking. Like that first yeah. statue boss and whatnot. It was so big and bright and coming off of the NES. This was it was just such a massive, huge improvement, visually speaking, and and audibly. Like the music was just hmm, chef kiss. Um so years later, Super Adventure Island 2 comes out, and I'm like, well, I got to play this. And when I start playing it, I'm like, well, this has nothing like Super Adventure <laughs> Island, but it's a lot like Zelda 2, which is one of them. I freaking love Zelda 2. So yeah. uh, I, I really fell for this game. And again, the music was right off the bat, just absolutely wonderful. So uh, that was really what kind of uh, made me a fan of this. It was my neighbor, James, who had the game, though. So I didn't get to finish it. 
uh, because I didn't own it, and it's not the shortest game in the world. Mm. Uh, but the no. two of us used to, you know, I used to go over his house and play it, and we didn't, I'd enjoy the map music and just kind of figuring out how to get from point A to point B and solve the puzzles. And uh, I've been meaning to go back and finish it for most of my life, and I still have yet to do that. <laughs> um, maybe one of these days I will, because I'd really like to. I really do like this game. Yeah, uh, that's a very good summary. Thanks. Uh, there are several games this game reminds me of. Zelda 2 was not one of them, but I definitely can see some comparisons to it now that you've mentioned it, um, like for sure. So, uh, and yeah, trying to figure out the whole Wonder Boy slash Adventure Island history is a real mess. So you guys were oh, braver I've, than I was. I've got, I've got it here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hysterical because like, you know, obviously it starts as right. Wonder Boy is how it starts. Yep. And yep. then Adventure Island is Wonder Boy, but rebranded because right. yes. Hudson yep. put it on Famicom. And then Wonder Boy sequel goes like, well, you know what? Why don't we do some more adventure elements? And Hudson solves like, no, we're just going to keep doing this. <laughs> and so they kept doing their thing for a long time. And Wonder Boy kept evolving, except it also didn't because there was still arcade style Wonder Boy games yep. and adventure Wonder Boy games. <laughs> And then Adventure yeah. Island kept evolving the original formula until you get to Super Adventure Island 2, where it reminds us a lot of the Wonder Boy sequels, yeah. <laughs> but it's still Adventure <laughs> Island on top of my favorite one in, oh God, I want to say 1980, where is that one? The Dragon's Trap. There oh, was Dragon's a, a, Trap, a, absolutely. There was oh a, yeah, Wonder that, Boy 3, I think, right? Oh, Wonder Boy 3, because there's two Wonder Boy 3s. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap is a masterpiece. It's one of my favorite games. That is a good game. I Yeah, I played a lot of the Adventure Island games like NES as a kid, but I never played the Wonder Boy games because I didn't have Master System, of course, until many, many years later. Like by emulation, but the Wonder Boy games are very good, I think, too. But uh, So the yeah. fourth Wonder Boy game is technically Wonder Boy 3 the Dragon's Trap because Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair came out in arcades mm -hmm. a year before, which is yep. a totally different game. Yep, yep. But when Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap, was ported to PC Engine in Japan, guess what it was called? Adventure Island! <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> because nothing uh, can be easy with this <laughs> lunatic franchise. It's yes, exactly. insane. <laughs> and to make it more confusing, even though, uh, um, even, uh, even though, so Adventure Island, so, so Super Adventure Island came out between Adventure Island 2 and 3, like the NDS. But Super Adventure Island 2 for the Super NES uh, came out, like, came out just after, like, Adventure Island 4, like the NDS. And mm -hmm. Super Adventure and Super Adventure Island 2 is going to be a direct sequel to uh, uh, like, like to be a direct sequel like to the game New Adventure Island, which only came out like the Telegraph 16 slash PC Engine. So back in '92, yeah. So it gets yeah. more confusing then at that point. So. Well, that doesn't even <laughs> that doesn't even bring in the Game Boy games where right. Adventure Island for Game Boy is a port. Sorry, Adventure Island for Game Boy is a port of Adventure Island 2. So Adventure Island 3 on Game Boy is actually Adventure Island... Sorry, Adventure Island 2 on Game Boy is Adventure Island 3 on NES because they hate us. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it gets like really like bonkers. <laughs> Unbelievably but. maddening, and I love it. So anyway, a little bit of history about this game beyond what we already talked about here. This game came out in Japan. Um, this, this, this game actually came out. It came out in North America first, uh, like October 1994. Uh, Japan didn't get into two months later. This is this. Uh, uh, there are there are a few examples of games coming out coming out in North America first for whatever reason. I don't know why this game came out first because it, it because because while it has a story a story it doesn't have that much text. So um, and maybe the franchise for Japan, but maybe franchise which were which were popular popular over here or like they're trying to get the game out in time for Christmas. Um, you know, like, um, you know, those are just the guesses, the guesses I came up with. But anyway, uh, Europe, Europe got the game also as well as well shortly after March 95. Um, it did come out with the virtual console, uh, back in 2011. Uh, but since then, the game, the, since, the, since the game has not been re-released like any kind of format. Uh, which is unfortunate, but unfortunate because I think like a, I think like an Adventure Island, one slash Wonder Boy compilation like that pretty cool. Oh my actually, god! I, I would love that. Actually, there there is a Wonder Boy one. I was gonna yeah, say they had a Adventure Island kind of rebirth thing on the Wii, which was pretty. That's good. That's true. They did. Yep. Mm -hmm. Actually, 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 also for trivia, let me. Um, you let me see if Chris knows this. Uh, this is the last appearance, Chris, of Master Higgins until what game? Uh, two thousand five Super Adventure Island for mobile, You're and then two thousand nine. Too far off. 
uh, Japanese, um, uh, the, 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 there was a game called Adventure Island, the GameCube PS2 in 2003 that was Japanese only. Oh, oh I thought that didn't come out. It did come out, but oh. in Japan only. <laughs> Oh, I thought that game got canceled. Well, silly me. All right. I'm thinking about the Bonk game. That's the one that didn't come out. Yes. Right. So, okay. All right. Got a little so, got a little confused there. Yeah. So, Master Higgins, we saw all the time in the 80s and 90s, but this is, this is very much a swan song, like, to that, like, um, uh, uh, for almost 10 years, like, right. like, that game came out. So, but, uh, yeah, because uh, uh, the publisher, as we already mentioned before, is Hudson Soft. Uh, we've already covered Hudson Soft before in the past podcast. I have a podcast, I'm, a podcast I'm not going to talk about them too much. Uh, but, Hudson, but Hudson Soft uh, is now part of Konami. And they, the flavor of Konami has all the rights to it. Um, that's why that when the, that, you know, that's when, uh, I mean, that's why that when the, uh, um, uh, uh, that when the PC Engine Mini came out a few years ago, Konami was the one to actually, to actually, to actually manufacture and distribute it. Mm. Which I really wish I side side note. I really wish I bought one of those when it came out. The timing was terrible because they're, they're, they're terrible. They're terrible because I was out of work at the time because of the pandemic and just like they only made the one small print run and that was it. So it's stupid expensive to get to get your hands to get your hands your hands on one of those uh, these days, unfortunately. But uh, anyway, so. Um, so as so as Joan Chris already alluded to, there are there are aspects of platforming uh, platforming uh, like this game, but there's also uh, there's definitely also aspects of like adventure uh, adventure games uh, games and even some light RPG elements in, in, in this game as well. Uh, in fact, in fact, what, in fact, the fact, in fact, the fact, research, I found some people who argued this game actually could be considered to be an early form, uh, from from like, from like Metroidvania game. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I can see. But I can see how somebody would make the argument. It has some elements to it. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I can see the argument, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. You've got, you have to get things, the items were act as, items and abilities act as keys to get to new areas right. in, in that specific acts, uh, aspect. I, I can see right. that. I'll buy it. I'll buy that for a dollar. <laughs> um, so, Chris, since you have the most familiarity with the game, how would you tell us about the game's story, like, uh, story like in the gameplay? Uh, well, the story, geez. Um, the, if I remember correctly, the story was, uh, I get this confused with the first game, right? His, um, <laughs> his girlfriend is turned to stone in the first one. Is she turned to stone in this one too? Cause I know you start no, the game. It's, nope. it's actually, there's actually his wife by this point, right? His um, wife. And she contacts him in a dream in the beginning. I haven't played this in a long they're time. They're on a honeymoon. They get separated in a storm. She has amnesia, amnesia, amnesia. He has to find her basically. Right. Yeah. Yes. And the King like hooks you up with some money in the beginning. Exactly. And he's he's yep. like, all right, go, ad- go <laughs> forth adventure. And master Higgins puts on some clothes, <laughs> yes, which I believe. <laughs> Eve is the first time in franchise history he rocks anything other than skateboard gear or a grass skirt. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm used to like you know seeing this guy like you know like being almost naked riding around a skateboard like uh, with, 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 like a Stone Age helmet like wielding like an axe. Except this game is like it's like you know some of the outfits you put on are, like pretty like what the hell is he wearing kind of like things. He's got a but... full full neon orange suit of armor on. He must yeah. be thinking to himself, wow, you know when I get hit by dragon fire, it hurts a lot less when I'm wearing you know anything other than grass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty bonkers. Anyway, the story is bonkers, but at least they made an effort to tie the story into past games. Like I mentioned before, it's the, this is the direct sequel to New Adventure Island. So I will give the developers at least credit for that much. Indeed, I, I I give them all the credit in the world for even attempting to crew, to put a through line narrative to something as silly as Adventure Island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, yeah, so uh, gameplay, eight stages. Uh, you do have the ability to go back to stages you already finished. Um, so I guess, it, I, guess it, I guess that's one of the better being the um, um, uh, ish aspects of that. Uh, uh, um, aspects Backtracking. Of the game. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, you, you do have random encounters uh, on the ocean, which you can run into, which I hate, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, Flags are going around like stage to stage. Uh, you, you do give me the ability to be able to get various weapons, armors, already mentioned to. There's also, there's also a casino where you can play mini games or money. You'd like to buy better stuff. Uh, there is a save feature in this game. Thank God there is one because, <laughs> you know, the, I mean, that's like a godsend. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the, that, that's the gameplay in a nutshell. Do you want to go into some more depth about this, Chris, and how actually, like, you know, like, actually, like, plays together as a game if you use your hands? Right. Um, so one of the things that struck me about this almost immediately was when, when playing it, uh, 
was your Adventure Island games have always been you know, your, your side scrolling platformer and have a good time. Uh, but you start this game and then uh, you, once you leave the castle, you get right to a map. It's a big open map that's very similar to the map in Zelda 2. You've got some really great tropical music going on, super catchy tune, and you're on your raft and you float around and uh, you do, like you said, you have random encounters while you're on this map. Again, just like Zelda 2, except instead of seeing little weird blob um, and monster icons run into you to uh, start up the battles, it just kind of happens to you as you're going. And every time you hit one of these random encounters, um, they are just little mini side-scrolling stages. Again, just like Zelda 2. It's like, well, here's a couple of screens, fight some enemies, get to the end of the screen, and you're back onto the map. And so you travel from place to place, every place that you can go, uh, adventure through some sort of side-scrolling area, find some items, find some money, buy things, collect things, uh, hit switches that correspond with symbols and you use that to open up new pathways on the map that gets you to the next island and the next island and there's backtracking like you said before and that's just kind of the basic gameplay loop you you're playing adventure island zelda 2 flavored <laughs> if you've played zelda 2 you understand the basic concept of the way this game works except Obviously, it's got its own differences. You don't have your right, your your typical castles and stuff like that. You're not trying to put crystals into funky right, like statues yeah, yeah. or anything. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's the basics to, of it. Okay, so I've already mentioned this previously, but this is actually a very good tie in. Like we were just talking about Chris. Um, so um, I mentioned before how this reminds me of a couple of games. So the other two did not come to me, but it is a very good analogy that you mentioned it. I was reminded about Adventure Round Four of like the NDS. I'm not sure if either of you guys have played that. Um, but this game is very similar to Adventure Round 4, like in many ways as well, too. It was being like, you know, like upgraded a bit in graphics. I mean, like the graphics musical department. Um, that didn't come out in North America, right? I Correct. Don't that think was Famicom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I did play it. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, um, like animation like, like a while ago. That's why it struck, it struck me. But uh, no, because it was such a late NES game that you see the point in like, releasing over here in the West. Yeah. So. Um, this game was actually developed for Hudson, however, by a company called Maki Software, um, um, uh, which is spelled make, M-A-K-E, but I'm assuming Japanese is actually pronounced like Maki. So, um, this is, this, this is their final game, uh, that they made, as a matter of fact. Um, they made a ton of the games, uh, that Capcom and, uh, the Capcom and, like, Nibuchu, uh, put out, uh, for, for, for 16-bit systems, uh, systems during the 80s and 90s. Uh, and they also made DuckTales 2. Uh, and this game reminds me very strongly also of DuckTales 2, like how it plays, because it has many of the same kind of adventure aspects uh, in this game as well that that game has. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, you know, same engine, uh, same engine almost in some ways, uh, like um, whatnot. So, um, so Joe, I'm curious to hear about you, uh, what you think about this. Uh, the thing that struck me most... The, thing that's like the, the, two things, the two things that struck me most about this game is how different it is Versus uh, versus the first 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 the first Super Adventure Island because of the other adventure slash RPG aspects in it. And second, I remember I remember playing to you back when we played Cover, uh, the Cover Super Adventure Island last year. Is that the controls in that game kind of sloppy? Um, um, but I didn't reveal that great. Mm. I thought the controls here are much tighter and much better for like the overall result. Yeah, yeah I definitely he's way feel less the, slippery. the controllers. The control is a bit better here. Um, oh, it's much better. Yeah, I, I it's think, like I actually have control over the, the guy. Yeah, my biggest downside for this game, honestly, was the fact that it's very RPG ish, but yet there are no experience points. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're you get into random battles, you fight the monsters, but you're not getting anything out of it except for some money, and the money is kind of crazy as well because it almost doesn't mean anything until you make it to the casino because well, you, you need have to address the big elephant. You, yeah. Yeah. You have to gamble to be able to get stuff. Um, one wow. of the examples that I actually wrote down was like the light shield is like 9,000 coins. The boomerang is like 14,000. Those are like your low end. Then everything else is a lot higher than that, including, yes. um, I think it's like the flame sword is something like almost like 35,000 coins. Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, gambling is absolutely the only way you're going to be able to quote unquote <laughs> grind this game. Um, but that being said, um, there is a bit of a hack with that because although there are three mini games that you can play, um, 
the best one is run for dough. And that is basically like you're betting on a horse race. Um, and it features enemies, you know, uh, from the game and bets are placed. Um, and you know, you place it on the enemy that you think that's going to win. And then it's like the multiplier is the one that sets your odds. And it's like, you're guaranteed almost every, every time, whether you win or not, you're winning more money than you're putting in. So that's, that's the best way to kind of cheat the game. But, uh, I thought the other gambling games were all right as well, but, um, like you could technically beat this game with just the light shield and the boomerang. Uh, I don't, yes. I don't recommend it, but you could. <laughs> um, so yeah, so yeah, so I would definitely, well, like definitely do want to talk about that, but I don't want to hark upon that too early in the podcast. So let's just like put that aside, like at the moment, okay. uh, because the big speed, the casino definitely is like a big part of this game that we <laughs> should talk about, like for sure. So, um, uh, sorry, Chris, what were you going to say? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, sorry, Chris. Did you say that? Did you say you had played Super Adventure Island One? Did you? Yes. Yeah, I've okay. I loved Super Adventure Island One. How do you think about the actual like controls and tightness and yeah, and the actual like and the actual like playing of the game per se in this game compared to the victory? Um, oh, uh, Higgins. To the first game? Higgins controls hands down better in this one. I mean, okay. he's he's also never jogging in place, which is kind of like a hallmark of the previous yeah. Adventure Island games. <laughs> yes, he's always yep, jogging yeah, in exactly. place, uh, yep. but he's way less floaty. You know, his feet are on the ground all the time, so you don't have to do that weird. What is it? You hold down to do the high jump in Super yeah, Adventure yeah. Island? Like that is such a pain in the butt feature to to pull that off reliably. Yeah. Um, there's none of that in this one. No, the controls are nice and tight. Um, yeah. It feels good to play. It looks good. It sounds good. Tastes great. Less filling. It's yeah. everything you want. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yep. So, uh, so uh, also, like, also keeping with the RPG aspect of this game, you also were able to learn magic spells uh, in this game that you're able to also play what you use. And it's also like, uh, so it's also like various moves that you guys like uh, learn, but, but like learn to um, uh, uh, learn to play through the game. Uh, which are which are critical at some points to to proceed actually to, uh, actually the magic and the moves uh, you know you have uh, um, uh, like definitely want to get both of those as flexible as, soon as possible so um, usually adventure round games are known for usually adventure round games are known for, like known for how difficult that they are and I was expecting this to be a very hard game going into it uh, because I remember the NES adventure round games I literally ripped my hair out in some cases trying to get to those games because they're very 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 hard games but. Um, I thought overall this game, probably because of the change they made to it, I the change they made to it was actually was actually one of the easier games in the franchise. Um, I don't know if their developers were trying purposely to target younger younger uh, younger game players, but but the few reviews of the game I couldn't find about this game back when it came out, so this game pro did specifically mention that in the reviews. So. Um, so yes, yeah, so overall, 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 I thought this game looked like, fairly easy. So I don't think that the game is necessarily easier, like by nature. I think it's because of the gameplay change. So in Adventure Island, you're constantly on the move. You have to get fruit and whatever else to keep your time up to be able to complete the level. If you just go sure, willy nilly yeah. and skip boss you know skip enemies skip fruit and all that other stuff you're going to run out of time and you're going to die before you reach the end of the level this game completely removes the whole time element and it True. encourages you to explore and to you know enjoy and soak in the entire environment so i i think it's that difference it's not so much that it's easier it's just you're not working against the clock as you were in the previous games you're also not fighting the controls as much either. Correct. It's, yes. Correct. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of times playing older Adventure Island games where you die. It's like, well, come on. Come on. Right. Come right, on. Right. <laughs> and this one, it's like, usually when you die, you're like, all right, that, that was me. Yeah. That was my exactly. fault. I get it. Yeah. I still felt like, however, the boss fights of this game when I was challenging, when I was challenging like some of the like uh, typical platformer game boss fights, though, because um, maybe it's because of all the abilities and weapons you have, 
But, uh, and, and you know, it, um, and it also depends upon what you come into that fight with. We're going to talk about the casino here, like a little bit here, because, because the weapons and armor you have obviously is going to make a huge difference, a huge difference, like how difficult, you, like how difficult you find the boss. Yeah. Somebody. But, um, uh, but I thought even earlier in the game, the boss, the boss fights, the boss fights are not that tough. No, I can agree with that. The boss fights weren't as tough as I expected them to be. But also, again, this goes back to the whole, it's an action RPG thing, like, if I'm not gaining experience, to me, that's not an RPG. Um, it, that that kind of changed how I looked at the bosses. To me, I, I didn't find them that difficult because it's based on what you're equipping when you're going in there. And, you know, it's not so much based on level and whatever else. It still requires skill. It also seems yeah. like, if I'm remembering correctly, you can take more damage in this game. Like, you can, remember, yes. You, yeah. know, you get to a boss that may ne- not necessarily have been harder just by design, but like you can make so many fewer mistakes in previous Adventure Island games, whereas Correct. this one you yeah. got a little more leeway. Yeah. That's one of the things I was thinking about when I said earlier before that you know that I thought that I thought the game was geared more toward younger and like younger audience. And I'm not the one who said this originally, by the way. Like I said, reviews of time mentioned how they thought the game was geared toward like younger people. Yeah, yeah. So whether or not it was, whether or not they thought it was intended it to be or not, that's the impression that was given to people uh, by this game. So um, which I think is. So which I think is the reason that may have hurt the game's overall reviews and popularity. We will talk about pricing here toward the end, but uh, this is actually a, this is actually a, this is actually a pretty uncommon game to find these days. Um, if you want a cart, you got to pay for a like, good deal of money for it. So I don't think it sold very well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, like I no, said, I'd never yeah. even heard of this. So this yeah. is this came yeah. out of left field for me. Yeah, didn't have a very wide release, if I remember correctly. Um, it's not a game that people talked about very much. I have no. one. It's. God, what is it? What is that thing worth these days? <laughs> well, you'll find well, out. Well, toward the end. But <laughs> yeah, this is. I would definitely uh, put this in. Uh, definitely a gem territory for the Super Nintendo, for sure. Yeah. Um. So overall, like so overall, the enemy design in this game I thought was like pretty cool. Um. The, the the level design was all right. I thought some obstacles were. Are, so I thought some obstacles were artificially were artificially placed to for kind. Of, just gonna force you to like drag things out like a bit longer, uh, and to, uh, um, uh, you want to make the overall game experience a bit, uh, like a bit longer. But beyond that, I, but beyond that, I didn't have any complaints as far as the actual like, overall like level and enemy design. I, I was like, the, um, so I thought, I, was, I thought all this stuff played out like pretty well. Yeah, I remember playing this game at my friend Greg's house, and like the fox shows up spinning his tails around I'm like, mm. oh, it's yep. tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> What's he doing here? And then he pooped on me. <laughs> that is a weird enemy right there. There are some weird enemies in this game, but they're all like, yeah, they're all like, like very good enemies. So I, uh, um, I think, uh, you know, like the most. Yeah, parts, I thought the so. enemy design was really good. I felt the sprites are just the right size to where you could see some detail on them, which was really nice. The bosses, of course, are huge, and I love the detail you can see with them. Um, even Master Higgins looks fantastic, um, and the different armor that he can wear. Um, you know, actually. Yeah. You know, although it's kind of the same, there are some differences, and it's nice to see those differences. So I thought the graphics were more. Yes, yeah, so I thought the graphics like were mixed bag. I'm curious to hear what you think about this, Chris, uh, because it's like um, I do agree with Joe that many of the backdrop sprites animations, animations, especially for Higgins, like are very well done. They look great. Uh, you know, this game, this game overall was a very good 16-bit update to an aging franchise, and I think, and the area I think it shows it shows most is in the like, in the graphics. Um, however, though, I kind of got the impression that maybe this game is kind of like rushed, uh, rushed out the door like a little bit because it's like some of the stages, for example, uh, they don't, this, some of the stage backdrops don't really look finished. They don't have like a single cover to them. And it's like, you know, I know the system could do a lot better than this. And I have seen, we have to play, we definitely have played platformers where there are multi-color backdrops. Why are so many backdrops in this game that don't have the one color? But, you know, it's just like, it isn't like a weird design choice. That's why I'm just wondering, maybe the developers rush this game out the door a bit faster than they want to? Um, because I'm not really quite sure what's going on here with that. It, it just feels very odd. It's like, 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 uh, maybe maybe rushed is the wrong direction. I don't know. I would imagine this is more of a funding thing, mm. where it's like, all right, you have this, you have this much time and funding to make the next Adventure Island game, and they decided to get way more ambitious with it. Yeah. Um. And that they you know they had to cut corners somewhere, and obviously, 
backdrops uh, is is somewhere where it fell apart. I do love the way this game looks. I love how bright and colorful it is. I love the art direction. I will say by 1994, I had slightly higher expectations in terms of uh, how well the game animates. Um, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we're you look at the other stuff on Super Nintendo at the time, granted, first party stuff in particular, but yeah. this game animates uh, about as well as Super Adventure Island did, uh, which was, you know, a couple of years prior. I would have... I would have liked to see some more fluid animations out of this one. But other than that, I really do like the look of the game. Yeah, I kind of got the impression also, maybe another reason for it, like, you know, that maybe Hudson was a pretty big company at like, this point, but, you know, they were making other, they were making games for other systems, uh, systems well. Um, they may simply, they may simply, they may simply have just assigned a B team, uh, uh, like working this game. You know, people, you know, like, you know, not the best programmers or developers that they had that they had on staff, like Super Nintendo, perhaps. So, you know, that could be another like, reason for it. But the music, however, oh, the music, the music, however, it's like it's great. I, I like all three of us like to be the music is great. Yes, uh, you know, it's probably the, 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 the music probably the music probably the music probably like the best thing that I enjoy the, the most about this game. It's a, now the first the first game the first game also has an amazing soundtrack, but, but a very I love different how this soundtrack. one. Yeah, this one, this is a very different soundtrack, but still works very, very well. It's a very mixed soundtrack because you go from like tropical to breezy to heavy to and it's like the back and forth. It's a very, like, it's a very, that's a very good ear warmy, a very appropriate, uh, just, just fun all over the place soundtrack that really works very, very well uh, overall, like overall, the overall life of the game, I thought. However, the sound effects, I, the sound effects, I didn't care for that much. I, I, um, I thought many sound effects, honestly, they're kind of like grating, uh, like are annoying yeah. to me, especially that, you especially that very out of place speech sample on the house screen, which is terrible. So it's like, I don't know why the music's so good and the sound effects are so bad, but, that, but you know, that's what it thought to me. They don't even make much sense. Like the, the attacking is all these weird little chirpy noises. Yeah. It's such yeah. a strange yeah. set of yeah. uh, sound effects. But whereas the music is, Ugh. especially by Super Nintendo standards, it's so high fidelity. You yeah. know, it's, yes, it is. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's crystal clear. Uh, but it's also such a huge departure from the Super Adventure Island, which was Yuzo Koshiro. Um, and and yes. it's very uh, like... 90s club music almost it's yeah. very like record scratches and kind of like lo-fi it's such a weird soundtrack to pair with that game whereas this seems to fit uh the tropical theme way better yeah absolutely actually um i actually recorded one of my favorite tracks because i specifically wanted to play it so that there was some sort of reference but um yeah let me uh let's why is why is there no sound coming from this Hold on. <laughs> there we go. So I can't hear anything. Oops. Hello. Uh, okay. Oh, there he is. I can barely hear it, and I know exactly what song this is. <laughs> so good, so good. We used we used this on a, our a, one of our winter specials on Wave Back. It's one. It's just that's ice level music. Yes, yes. top tier, and it's like top tier it, ice it level music perfectly. And it's like when I was like listening to it, I was literally just sitting there letting like an enemy just beat me up. I wasn't even. I didn't even care. I was like, I gotta, re- I gotta record this. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, it was apparently, um, the, the composition, by the way, was apparently, was apparently a three-team effort. And even, um, even though I had their names, I couldn't find anything else that they worked on. So, um, so like, that's a shame. But, uh, yeah, because the, the music, the, because, yeah, the music is far and away my favorite thing about this yeah. game. It's like, it's just an awesome, an awesome selection. So, well, um, Akihiro Akamatsu had a lot of stuff with Capcom, it looks like. Okay. Um, also worked on DuckTales 2 for both NES yep. and GameCube. Of course Mylon's, they did. Yep, same company developed it, so that makes sense. Game Boy Port of Mylon's Secret Castle, some old Mahjong games. Uh, let's see. I didn't realize there was a Game Boy and Mylon port, huh? I, th- I don't know if that actually actually came out in North America. Mm. Let's see. What about Saki Sachiko Oita? 
boy, oh boy. I am terrible with uh, pronouncing these names. So um, <laughs> the only Better other thing I, am, I can so. see attached to this person's name is an uncredited composer on Rescue Rangers 2 for NES. Okay. Oh, yeah. That also had a good music to it. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. And yeah. what about good old Shinji Nakaya? Shinji Nakaya. What have we here? Um, composer... Uh, st- that one's just listed for Super Adventure Island too. Yeah. So one famous person and two like not so fam- uh, famous mm. folks. And did he do? But. Yeah. All I'm seeing is Super Adventure Island too. That is it. Yeah. Attached to this person. All right. Well, there you go. So anyway, it's like, anyway yeah. So overall, the, the overall, the overall, I thought this game, uh, the change in direction from being from a pure platformer to more of a platform slash adventure slash RPG was a very welcome change. I thought um, so, so, so. I think the developers realized that by this point, the adventure on the, the adventure on the adventure on format was format was getting like very stale. Maybe another reason. Um, maybe another reason adventure on four didn't come out in the U.S. was because they realized that you know that you know people were probably getting tired of playing the same thing over and over again, like the Mega Man at the time period. So um, I think this was the breath. Like a breath of fresh air, the franchise the franchise badly needed. it. Uh, not only giving it a sixteen bit facelift, uh, but also like you know putting these new elements. I think overall, for most uh, so I think overall, I think overall, like, the, like the most part, like worked there very well. So, um, except of course for the damn casino, which we need to talk about here because. <laughs> God, I hate that thing. I hate that thing with a passion. I think it's the worst thing about this game, and and so I'm gonna. If I don't tell you, I'll tell you why. Because the casino artificially doubles the length, of, at least doubles the length of time you're playing this game. Because you look on YouTube, and I have to play through this game is about play about four hours, give or take like, like a few minutes. But if you just simply but a speed run of the game with a person with a person who doesn't go to the casino at all and just plays with the game from beginning to the end as a platform would normally to do, the best time of that is like an hour forty five minutes. So that's a huge time difference there between like playing the game as intended versus a speed run. And it's like as and so like as you guys already noted, the best weapons in this game are terribly expensive. So it's like you're encouraged to make use of the casino, uh, even though trying to get all the money uh, that you need to buy that stuff is, is, as it's mentioned before, a two hour or so grind to do all that. And you're encouraged to do all that stuff early on in the game because it's, it's because it's, it's because upgrading yourself that much gets you to the law of diminishing returns, where it's like if you do it too late in the game, it's like it's not worth the time or effort that you put into upgrading. But at the same time, at the same time, getting all that best weapon armor stuff or stuff in the game makes the rest of the game cakewalk. So the casino really just throws the whole difficulty and sense of time of this game out of whack. And that's for, 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 for the reason I hate it so much. I don't, I, I, um, so I don't, like, I don't hate the casino, the casino itself. I just think the price should have been a lot better, should have been a lot more adjusted down to reality. And, it should, and the casino should have been a more of an optional feature in this game instead of like being like, you kind of have to do it unless you're like a very good player. Because, 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 people, because, people, because people, people speed run this game are very good at being in this game with minimal weapon, weapons and armor. And because, and, and trying to be. Like trying to be the final bosses with minimal weapons and armor, I'm not sure if you guys tried it, I did, is next to impossible. So you kind of have to do the casino grind, but the casino grind really just feels out of place and out of place and, and artificially, like artificially inflates the, inflates the, the length of the, 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 this game by double, if not more. So it's just a terrible, terrible idea. It's really, and it's really, and really overall, I think even though this game has so many, even though, for me at least, even though this game, even though this game, this game does so many things well, the music, the updated, the updated gameplay, the, 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 the tighter controls, the whole casino experience puts the is such a negative to me that I'm like I never want to touch this game again because it's like it's so horrible that I have to go do that the casino experience. So I never really hate it with a passion. So that's just such so like that's kind of like how I feel about it. I'm just kind of curious to know if you two uh, disliked it as much as I did. Well, I don't know if I disliked it quite as much as you did because it sounds like you really disliked it. <laughs> um, I hated it. Yes. Uh, no, it's it, it's it was such so clearly padding, and it really goes back to the theory that either this game was rushed or uh, just ran out of money. Like it needed, it seemed like they had bitten off more than they could chew with this game's development. They were like, all right, this is the game we want to make. Oh crap. We're all out of time and or money. How do we make this game more than like an hour and a half long? 
uh, well, we have this casino thing. Let's just do that and make things more expensive. Like it really, it does come off as just, just pure padding. Um, it, it, it's kind of fun in my playthroughs. I hadn't gotten much farther than that. Like when I would go over to my neighbor, James's house to play this, uh, you know, I would play the first chunk of the game a bunch of times with him. Um, and eventually, he did all the casino stuff and then I was around when he beat the game. So I've seen him fight the last boss, but I never did it myself because I he never personally got past then, the so good man. Exactly. He did all the suffering <laughs> for me, but he didn't he didn't he, he I don't remember what he thought about that casino. Like I just don't remember him saying much about it other than he was glad he was finally done with the game. So yep, maybe maybe my way. overall <laughs> affinity for this game comes from the fact that I've never endured the casino properly you know and you can't beat the game without the casino like i mentioned before it, it just makes it very very like just like just a fork this kind of bosses with minimal weapons like a very difficult yes yeah. right um joe what about you so i mean i didn't hate the casino um as i mentioned like i learned real quick that run for dough was like the cheat in the game um and abused the hell out of that but um you know it's definitely easier these days of safe states. They yes, do that. Yes, then, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah, so. um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't hate it. And I think if I played it at the time, yeah, it might have like kind of drained me a bit to the point where I would have been you know, like, you know what? Like, it's not worth it. And I might not have continued. But, um, you know, with today's technology and everything else, like, it wasn't that bad. Um, yeah, like, I. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous that like it's a necessity um, cuz you know the other stuff that you could buy like it unlocks cool abilities and like you can it makes the game a little bit easier as far as like the final boss and whatever else so it's like you you want to do it but it's also one of those like do you really want to do it <laughs> um so you know like you know I I think the experience would not have been as bad for me if just there like, 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 wasn't such a huge disparity in prices between like the, the cheapest gear and the best gear in the game. It's like, why does the best gear have to be so much more obscenely expensive? Couldn't it be like down a bit more, please, with everything else? I think it's the thing that just like was like oh, that got me the most. So as we've already stated numerous times, um, clearly running out of time, money, whatever it is, I I feel like. This was a compensation for uh, the fact that there probably was supposed to be an experience system that was implemented, but because of what we've discussed before, that wasn't able to be finished. So but therefore, they were like, well, how can we make it so that people will play our game longer? Here's the casino. Um, I think that makes the most sense. Um, and definitely answers the question as to like, why does this have R RPG elements, but there's no experience to be gained? Yeah, because like the Wonder, yeah, because the um, uh, the Wonder Boy games, Chris, most of those have experience in them, right? Which what the old Adventure Islands have experience? No, sorry, the Wonder Boy games. Uh I don't think so. I thought most of them did. Um, uh, well, all it right. has been a while since I played them. So Wonder Boy: The Dragon's Trap does that have experience? I don't think so. No, Wonder Boy the did. Well, Dragon's Trap. No, I think just you just get the different transformations. Yeah, I was gonna say Dragon's oh, yeah, Trap. Yeah. I think you get the different transformations, and it also relies on a coin system. But thankfully, no gambling. That's okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. So sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Like, sorry like, I'm and and for but. that game, I feel like the coins that you collect by killing the enemies that is your experience. Um, because, like I yes. said, right. nothing is too out of reach to where you have to have a gambling aspect to make it better. Like, you can I pick up that armor yeah. for, like, 50 yeah. coin. You know what I mean? It makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Dragon's Trap is also a masterpiece. So, we're... we're yes. Right, it's, right, right. It, it seems to me like Adventure Island crew wanted to try to chase what Wonder Boy had become and just weren't up to the task. That's I fair. mean, not that this is... It was a big swing, and I respect it. They just didn't quite... Yeah. They could have just copied that system, though, about like the gold, the gold in this game, and call it, if they had it in, uh, um, um, added in everything else that the game had, and called it a day. But it's like you know, I it's like you know, yeah. So I think maybe Joe's 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 theory about the casino system makes the most makes the most sense. But just like unfortunately, 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 just going to wrapping thoughts here, wrapping up thoughts here. Unfortunately, the end of the day, the casino, the casino, the casino, that's such a bad taste in my mouth 
that I don't. I mean, I really don't think I want to, that. I personally don't want to play this game again because of that. I think the game itself is fine as long as you're as I you know um as you you know you know as long as you don't mind mind as much as I did. I think that um so I think this game does do I think this game does do some nice some things some things very well. Um, it's better quote unquote than Super Adventure Island in some ways, but it also but but. It, so I think it all depends upon what you're looking for in a game. If you want a pure platforming game, Super Adventure Island is still a like, pretty good game. Um, if you want a more pseudo Metroidvania style game, I think this game is very. I think that this game is very interesting to look at from the time period it came out with, and it's fun to play. Certainly, it's, it's fun to play certainly in stages. But it's like it just it depends upon your tolerance for that casino system. Um, you know, like um, you know whether you know whether or not you want to like, like go through that or not. Um, I, I, I say, um, so, so I guess my recommending this game depends upon your own tolerances for what you're looking for in a game and how much you're willing to put up with that casino system. So what I will say, and I apologize, Chris, I'm going to just throw this in there before uh, I let you give your thoughts, but, um, yes, I, I agree. You should definitely try this game. The casino part, as we've said, kind of sucks. It is what it is. Um, but I think the music, um, the detail in the characters, the adventure that you go on, the bosses that you encounter, the abilities that you get um, are definitely all worth it for this game, and I think it should definitely be tried. If there's one thing that I can say that I absolutely hated about this game, um, and I'm shocked that nobody brought it up, was there is a point where you have to travel through uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Whirl whirlpools to tr to travel to get to like the, oh, the final yeah. island oh, yeah. and yeah and you okay. can't die at any process of that traversing or you start all the way back at the beginning and that is a major pain and i thought that was the biggest detriment to the game but it's also so small of a thing that i don't think it outshines everything else in the game and that's why i waited till my final thoughts to bring it up um so as Great as, you know, this game could be, yes, there are things that are not so great that may taint your experience with it, but at no point would I tell you not to at least try this game. Yeah, that's 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 pretty good. I would I wouldn't argue with that much. It's a what's the word I'm looking for? It's more ambitious than it is good. Um this is one of those games that you just look at like, wow, this was this was a a big swing and uh they certainly tried they didn't nail it mm. uh but the the stuff they did get right it makes it interesting enough to uh, it makes it interesting enough to be worth playing at least once um and certainly listen to the soundtrack plenty of times afterwards yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're yeah, if, if you're right, somebody the soundtrack, yeah. Sound, yeah yeah if so. you're somebody who wants to who really likes the the super nintendo experience you've never played it before this is by no stretch a bad game um it's just one of those situations that where a game is more interesting than it is good. And that's not really, that doesn't make it not worth your time. It's, it's definitely a fascinating little game. 100%. Well said, Chris. Yep. Yep. Definitely agree with that. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I was going to ask you, Chris, how you thought the game held up today, you know, since you're the one who had experience playing it, uh, playing the game back then, it sounds like I should play something for you that by those far holds up like pretty well. I, I mean, it's uh, Super Nintendo in general, I think, is one of those platforms that holds up. If you liked a game back then on Super Nintendo, chances are you're still going to like it today. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's true for most genres in the system. There are some I think like, you know, you know, there definitely are some genres I think that have not aged, have, have not aged well. Sports, sports games, for example, have definitely not aged well. But um, right. Uh, sports you know, sports but, games back then were also a little bit of a challenge. Uh, you know, there were a lot of people, folks who didn't yeah. sports games in the Super Nintendo era are so fascinating because we actually are covering sports game sports game next episode. This is actually appropriate. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a uh, sometimes this is where the, as as systems became more powerful, um, yes. sports games had to start making choices between realism and fun. Whereas you look right. back on NES games, NES sports games are so 
simple. They're so pick up and play and they're really fun. Um, and then you got, you started to see like sports games get taken a lot more seriously during this, uh, uh, the, the super NES and Genesis era. And sometimes you'd knock it out of the park, right? Sometimes you're, you're, you're hitting some like genuinely fun sports games, but it's like, you're starting to rub up against like, well, how do we, how do we want to one up this? How do we make this better? Um, as far as like being more realistic, more uh, attuned to what the sport actually is, as opposed to just focusing on the pure arcadey simplicity of it. You know, everyone talks about how NHL 94 is like the best hockey game of all time. And it's, it I respect the hell of that game. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's great. It's a very good time. Um, but for my money, personally, I always go back to ice hockey or blades of steel mm. because it's that much simpler. Right. You know, it's just, it's just straightforward. It is such a distillation of what the sport is. And once we started getting more power behind these systems, you didn't need to distill the sport down to its basics. Um, you would, you could start expanding on like, well, how do we make this play more like the real thing? And things got more and more complicated. And of course, now you have the absolute dredge that sports games are today, which is uh, they're completely inaccessible. There's paywalled behind tons of exclusivity on platforms and publishers uh sports games uh, modern sports games are an absolute mess yeah. uh just rife with microtransactions and trading cards and how to properly monetize every single aspect of a game but that's a uh, that's a podcast for another podcast <laughs> <laughs> i just wrote an entire thing on how i i think sports games are a mess and somebody needs to fix it um, that's fine i agree with you i mean like i agree with you like the most part but um but i know what you mean uh, but I know what you mean. Like, for the most part, Super NES games hold up pretty well today. It's like, you know... Right. Like, they like, still you know, look like, really good. Compared um, to, like... Yeah, compared to, like, for example, PlayStation games, which, which many, many, of them, many, of them, many of them still play very well, but to look at the game now and you're going like, ugh, what the... Who the hell, like, barked on the screen, but... Yeah, like, the, some PlayStation it, games are hard to look at. That generation in yeah. general is... is yeah. but, but that's the thing. It's, it's, it's yeah. funny where you say the stuff like that aged well. Whereas I always felt that generation was difficult to look mm. at. I struggled so much during that entire generation, between 64 PlayStation and Saturn, where like sometimes you'd catch these glimpses of just unbelievable beauty with these 3D polygons, even with their low resolution textures, like the sun rising and uh, Ocarina of Time or the dragon going off that cliff in the second or third level in Panzer Dragoon 2. Like there are these amazing moments where companies would really embrace what the system could do instead of just hiding behind like, uh, CG cutscenes or something, but for the most part, everything was so boxy and clunky that I, I always had a hard time with that generation. So it's why when I think back to the PlayStation era, you know, I just sit Symphony of the Night for me because that's what that's what I wanted out of the evolution of video games was what are you going to do better with sprites? And uh, so few people actually did that during that generation. We're only really getting to that point now. Uh, with indie games over the last like five or six years mm -hmm. where we're starting to see what yeah. would happen if you really just evolved exactly what the super Nintendo and Genesis could do. Right. What if you just evolved yeah. that? And that's that's utterly fascinating. But for the most part, yeah, I do look back on super Nintendo games and obviously there's other stuff where quality of life gets in the way. Like yeah. you go back yeah. and playing super street fighter two turbo on super Nintendo. It's like, or sorry, super street fighter two. It's like, well, this is cool, but now I can play the arcade version of my house anytime I want. So this is yeah. <laughs> pointless, you know, Mortal Kombat two on super Nintendo is outstanding, but now I can play the arcade version yeah. anytime I want. So it's we, not we that big a deal. Our podcasts, uh, the, the, those games. Yes. I definitely agree with you, but, yeah. uh, but, but yeah, I think this yeah. game holds up well, yeah. holds up. Well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good argument. It's like, you know, it's like, um, one, uh, the like one quick thing, like you said, you said in my mind, uh, flays, but you said you said your mind like something at night comes to mind for you for the like PlayStation game. I think so. I think PlayStation. I think PlayStation. PlayStation. I think like Metal Gear Solid. Because that game, I still get to be that game. Still, like a lot of fun to play today. But it absolutely is, and that's a perfect example of what I was talking about, where a company would embrace what the system can do. I just replayed Metal Gear Solid on the the collection. Uh, for review on oh, Nintendo I get Force. That. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, wonderful. So, okay. And they didn't yeah. change a darn thing. It just looks exactly like the PlayStation game. And yeah, you look at 
you look at that game as it's running and uh, you're having these dramatic cut scenes where the faces are these like just really low res textures on these polygons, <laughs> but it works because there's it's a hundred percent consistent with exactly what it is where you go back yep. and play something yeah. like final fantasy seven. And it's like, man, this game looks amazing, except the game itself is these super blocky polygons on these pre-rendered backdrops yeah. that sure they look nice, but the rest of it, it clashes with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just finished playing rebirth and I was just having this talk with a friend the other day. It's like Final Fantasy seven was so amazing back in the day, but okay. Now and you go on like, what are all these Doritos doing on the screen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I was I, always the way I felt about Final Fantasy VII. I would look at it and say, "Well, the background the background looks really cool, but the game doesn't look like that." But then you get to the actual battle sequences, and that looks great because it's a hundred percent consistent within itself. Yeah. It's not hiding behind yeah. uh, CG to kind of make the game look better than it actually is. So when you look at yeah. like the best games of that generation, like Metal Gear Solid or Ocarina of Time, you're looking at something that just totally embrace this is what this game looks like so let's make let's make these graphics do what we can it's just like looking at final fantasy 6 you know the super mm -hmm. nintendo had its limitations and they were like well this is the we're going to tell this story and we're going to make these characters the best we can and we're just going to make it a hundred percent believable within this cohesive visual style we're just going to a hundred percent dive into this and that's what it's going to be and yeah, yeah metal gear solid is a great example of that working so well on the playstation that uh, kojima yep, agree, and his definitely. team were like this is what we can do so this is what we're working with we're not hiding behind anything fancy yep absolutely like i think like i agree about that that's a great, um I, that's a great argument so like it's interesting that so and it's so just to bring this like back around the um um it, to background of this game, um, I had um, so I had um, so I, 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 I thought you made a great point earlier. How I was saying how this game was very vision, visionary and visionary, and perhaps the developers bit off a bit more than they, than they could chew with, with, with the ideas they had in this game. How they how they wanted to have this game presented and what actually happened to, and, and what actually what, and what actually happened when the game when the game got made. I, I I hadn't thought about that, but again, I think it's a very good point to make that maybe these developers, for whatever reason, did have that vision in mind. Mind and could not, for one reason or another, make it happen because I think there's because I think, like I said before, there are definitely are things in this game that are improved upon and done much better in later games, both platformers and like non-platformer games. So, um, so I think that so I think that this game should definitely get respect for at least trying to do things differently than how it was. Like I said before, the franchise definitely needed to face it at this point. And I thought the odds, uh, I think, just gave it to them, but I but but I really think the. Um, the idea of them trying to introduce new stuff to this, new stuff to this, and seeing what took, like what took to do, what took, like we did take, was something I had to reconsider until you mentioned it. I think it's a great point. Why, thank you. <laughs> uh, do you have anything else you want to say about this game before we wrap up? Nope, I think I pretty much said my piece. Okay, all right. So um, there are no cheat codes uh, available for this game, but like my surprise, uh, or at least uh, there are a bunch of game genie codes that are very useful. But as far as actual cheat codes themselves, like uh, on the um, Oh, they're really going to find anything. Um, as we already mentioned, this was a pretty small release and therefore didn't get to, uh, uh, therefore, the, 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 therefore did not get a lot of coverage back in the day. Game Pro is the only, it was like the only magazine I could find that actually, that, that actually, that actually, that actually did a review of this game and it was a very small review. It, 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 it wasn't one of the like full ones. So it's like they didn't give it a score per se, but, uh, they, but they talked about, you know, they mentioned many the same things that we did in this podcast. So, um, Game rankings, an aggravator game site, uh, an aggravator, an aggravator site online uh, gives the game an average twenty five percent, which I think is like a pretty, like a pretty fair score yeah. for this game. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. So I'm trying to think of, um, goodness, Super Adventure Island Two was reviewed in Nintendo Power issue sixty six. Oh. What did they say about it? I don't think they were giving. Um, they weren't giving. Uh, what's it? Um, a review. They were just giving a score. Yeah, I think they were giving the. I think it was the opposite. I think they didn't give them scores. I think they just gave them. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah, the game pro did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm downloading it right now. Let's take a look. What did <laughs> Nintendo Power have to say about Super Adventure Island Two? Come well, why are you doing that? I'll talk about eBay because, like I mentioned before, this is not a very common game to find. I mean, well, I mean, 
Of course, at eBay, you can find the game for sale, but you but the, but the game definitely prices prices a bit more expensive than usual Super NES games here because of that. Um, actually, card only, there's a huge difference in pricing on here between like um, um, you know, and some of that's and some of that's because of the you know the quality of the card, how much damage there is, that kind of stuff. But I think also because of the fact that I think that I think that. Um, People probably don't recognize this game as being like a good game, like like a like good game. Therefore, it's not very, uh, uh, um, so. Therefore, the demand for the game is not very high. But anyway, um, at the time of research, how, uh, 118, 118 copies of this game like, like available on eBay. 16 copies of it, the game had recently sold. These prices include shipping. Currently, prices for this game vary wildly. I found one copy that sold, that sold recently for as low as twenty five dollars, but I think that was a fluke because the just because the average because the average car pr- the uh, car pricing for this game sold anywhere from like eighty to one hundred thirty five dollars. Hmm. So yeah, that sounds more about right. Maybe it was a repro or something. Who knows? It wasn't marked being a repro, um, and I and I didn't see any evidence about any other repros being sold. So you know, oh. the, you know, this like I said, the, like I said, this is not the, like I said, this is not a big name game. I don't think the demand for uh, 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 the demand for repros is out there. Uh, so well, it is a it is a sought after collectible game. This is you know one of those games for anyone looking to collect Super Nintendo. This is one of those games folks go after. I only found one CIB copy of this game that sold recently for one hundred sixty six like one hundred like one hundred like sixty six dollars. So the uh, like one six six. So wow, one sixty six. That's low. Mm. But they actually right. Well, there actually was a sale copy of this game that sold recently also too. Um, and that sold for if I over a pretty impressive five twenty three. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Game I currently lists it complete in box for three hundred eleven. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So one sixty six was a good price then. Yeah. That's I. I have I have a complete copy of this myself. Uh, from you know from back in the old days. <laughs> oh, well, according to Game Eye, I know what it's worth. Uh, I don't. Well, like I said, you know, one sixty six was what the copy sold on eBay, so I think you probably get like two hundred dollars for it easily. So yeah, definitely, definitely in the two hundred dollar range. But this one's always been a spicy one. Like even back in yeah. my Funko Land days, this was this was always one of those games. There's just not a ton of them out there, um, and it's a pretty decent game. So it's well sought after. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it does seem to value a little bit less than Mega Man Soccer, though. So go yes. figure. Interesting. <laughs> Every time I open this app, my my eyes just bulge out of my head of like the sheer ridiculous quantity of money I'm sitting on on Super Nintendo games. <laughs> Even stuff that's completely confusing, like this game SOS. Holy well, cow. all video game market, well, all video game prices spiked in recent years because of the pandemic. Mm. But Super NES was already with Super NES was already with Super NES was already was already trending upwards anyway because. Yeah. Because now, because now, the time period where like people, you know, dispose, you know, adults, adults with disposable income had this, had this as a kid, want to buy the games, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Like you saw it, like you saw it back in the nineties, like towards the hundreds in the like the Clicker Vision, so you saw the two thousands, like the NES. Now it's having the Super NES, and and now and now this year it's having the PlayStation with the PlayStation and the PS two and the Xbox three sixty. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean yep. those prices. I mean, I mean those prices. I mean, I mean, I mean, Joe. You buy games so you to the system still sometimes. Those prices have skyrocketed recently too. Yeah, and I, I I'm out of the the game collecting market. So uh, once you know the pandemic hit and those prices started skyrocketing, I I jumped out as soon as possible. I was already kind of out of it. <laughs> like I had sold my physical NES collection probably about six years ago, but. Like, I just got, okay. you know, it's like, oh, it's taking up this much space. I could be putting other things in that space. And and that's yeah, where it started. And concern. then yep. once I yep. got rid of the NES stuff, it was like, okay, well, now I can just emulate this and emulate that. And then the mini consoles came out. And then you yep. got the Raspberry that, Pi. <laughs> and now mini PCs, like, to the point where, like, now I'm just like, okay, I have my PS2 which is modded. I have my 360, which is modded. I have my Saturn, which I have the little game shark thing in the back yep. so that I can play backups. Yep, Joe and I also, uh, Joe and I, I also both have net games like the pitball table, which also can be half yep. modded. Yep. So it's yep. like, we got a base yeah. covered. Yeah, and I mean, I, 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 and then I have like a mini PC strictly for like arcade games. Um, and then yep. I have my Xbox Series X and my Switch and yep. my Steam Deck that I really don't need, but I have a Steam Deck. So <laughs> the Steam Deck's great to have too, but there's a you can do a lot of things with it. So, all right, I found the uh, I found this review. Uh, this is extraordinarily uh, informative. 
You ready for this? I'm going to read you the entirety of the review. <laughs> this mix of side-scrolling action with RPG and adventure-style elements makes for a deep game that is fast-paced from moment to moment. This month, Power looks in on the wacky antics of this island-hopping hero. That's the entire review. <laughs> with that, here's here's your, here's your final thought. The, the plus... A good mix of action adventure with puzzles, items, and helpful characters. Minus, like previous Adventure Island games, the theme is pretty silly. Be warned, this isn't a straight hop and bop. Fair enough. Not extremely yeah. informative, but yeah. uh, I mean, but accurate. nothing they said is wrong, I guess. No, uh, no. no it's, it's, like, it's that there's like information on who published it and they would suggest a retail price of $64.95, November 94, memory size. Uh, adventure for one player and then two screenshots it's it's less than well, a quarter of a page that's it <laughs> that's all that, that that's all that's all game pro gave to theirs a quarter of a page so yeah. but of course but, this yeah. was the same issue they reviewed donkey kong country yeah. oh of oh course, geez yeah. yeah donkey kong country earthworm jim indiana jones greatest adventures nba you have a physical collection of game pro you... also too like also chris right didn't you say that nintendo power yeah i have a full okay, okay. full run of nintendo power that's awesome well well, if you want to look up Game Pro, they covered the game it's like the February '95 issue, uh, page, uh, not page sixty-four. So, but anyway, so yeah, uh, I don't regret playing this game because I had no idea what it was, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, this is actually like pretty like innovative game at the time period. So, um, it just it just unfortunate for me the whole the whole the, 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 me the whole casino experience just, just wore the whole game down for me. But I think, uh, but I think overall, this the but I, uh, yeah, but I, yeah, but overall, it was fun to play. You know, I, I didn't, uh, so I didn't mind playing it. So, um, thank you. So, so thank you for this, like, so thank you for the suggestion, uh, suggestion of Carbon Sequel. Yeah, show. you know, I mean, we're going to get to it eventually, anyways, right? <laughs> uh, yep, exactly. So, and thank you very much for also for, uh, thank you also very much for taking time of a busy day to join us on the podcast once again there, uh, Chris. Of course, this was a hoot. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, and next time, next time, as as I, as, I, as I alluded to, we are covering sports game. So I think it's also a game that you also said to Chris, Chris, that you also spent some time on back in the day. Yes, so, indeed. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to be covering uh, Super Bases Loaded. So um, do you have experience with this game at all, Joe? No, but I played the original Bases Loaded. <laughs> Yeah, base loaded yep. NES. Uh, I played all three games. I played the. Um, I was. Um, I was played this game a lot back in the day too. So I definitely have some fun actually, my this, first but. bases loaded experience was in the arcade. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I, 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 I actually never saw it like in the arcade. Um, I, I never, I, um, I never knew Blades of Steel was an arcade game either until like many, many yep. years later. So because I, because again, because again, because again, because again, that's again another game I never saw like in the arcades, but. Um, but yeah, so RBI uh, RBI baseball was my usually go to go to baseball series, but but base loaded is also a series that I spent a lot of time with. So Super Bases Loaded has the distinction of having quite possibly the single greatest sports team name in all of history. Oh, and God. that is that you can play as the Atlanta Amoebas. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> It's that, that the best thing. Good, yes. the, the logo is just mm, chef kiss. It's a work of art. <laughs> we won't ask you to join us again for another episode so soon, Chris. But if you want to record a submission for us, so that we're glad to include the, the, the podcast. I just might. It'll probably just be talking for 10 minutes straight about how much I love the Atlanta Amoebas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to you, sir. You can do it if you want to or not. But I'll see what I can uh, do. Um, what podcasts, projects, web pages, whatever keep you so busy these days, Chris? Oh God, all of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I am the uh, um, content supervisor for geekate.com, which hosts the Super NES podcast that you're listening to. I am the host of the Stone Age Gamer podcast, the official podcast of StoneAgeGamer.com, uh, which is our just retro gaming video game podcast for me and my friend Dan talk about. Video games, life, lawn care, all kinds of stuff. Lawn uh, care. <laughs> I host uh, the Waveback Music Podcast, which is a show de dedicated to video game music. It comes out once a month uh, with my friend Matt. Uh, my friend Matt and I also host a non-video game music podcast called Turning Tracks, where we take turns uh, choosing a band and uh, the two of us go back and forth uh, picking different bands. Uh, for example, he's picked uh, Alice in Chains for our next episode, and the one that w just recently went up was uh, my pick, which was Japanese rock band The Pillows, which you may know from the anime Fully Cooly if you're yeah. a huge nerd nice. like me. Uh, 
I co-host a TV podcast for Geekade called This Week's Episode, where uh, me, Evan, my wife, and his wife uh, talk about uh, uh, TV shows every month. Uh, and then I also host the I host a movie podcast for Geekade called A Theater Near You with my friends Sean and Paul, where we uh, run through the alphabet and pick a different movie every month for a different letter of the alphabet. Uh, what the heck are we on now? We just did Ewoks for... Um, F then G was, Oh God, we just watched this movie and now I can't remember what it was. Uh, I'm sure it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, it was F <laughs> right. We just did FX two. Holy cow. What a weird movie that was. And for G we're going to do the new Ghostbusters movie because the timing of that was just nice. perfect. Uh, you can find yeah. my writing in the pages of Nintendo force magazine, which is the spiritual successor to Nintendo power magazine. It's a physical magazine uh, where uh, we do reviews, previews, all that kind of good stuff. I've got a bunch of reviews coming up in this one, including the Metal Gear Solid collection on Nintendo Switch, which I rather liked, uh, and uh, Princess Peach Showtime, which has been a fascinating experience. But that's a whole that's a whole podcast. I've been playing that game myself, but I have friends who played it, frankly love it. So apparently, it is a well done game. It's well done. It's fascinating because it is extraordinarily easy, but it is not for me. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. for. I, I seriously, I could go on for way too long about it. There's nothing wrong with an easy game. I think like I think nowadays, many games, many games, many games are so hard that you know, like easy games are always a good thing to have. I think. Right, but it's 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 easy in a different way than you might expect. Whereas like, so you think of like, oh well, my I have a daughter, right? I have a seven year old daughter. She should be able to play yeah. Kirby or Super Mario Brothers, but she actually can't. And it's this thing with a lot of people who don't play games regularly is that moving a character and doing something else becomes too much. And that's the difficult part of the game is actually keeping track of moving a character and doing something else. Like my wife, terrible video games, but she 100% completed runner two because she doesn't have to move the character. She just has to press a button. So mm, that's okay, such an yeah. interesting disconnect. Um, you look at princess peach showtime. This game is designed to be as simplistic as possible, but rewarding enough for somebody who doesn't know how to play games or just can't play games to keep going with hmm. it. So while it's for me, it's just an unbelievable cake cakewalk. And even my son, who's not great at video games, he's getting a lot of joy out of the game because he can very easily get through it. Where my daughter, who can't get through a level of Kirby without being so frustrated that she just can't get through things. She is playing the heck out of this game because it's. I never thought Kirby was an easy game anyway to begin with. To be fair, that, that's a good point. Everyone says Kirby's super easy, but like it's, it's real not. easy to die in that game. <laughs> real easy to die in those games. But yeah, Princess Peach Showtime is is, is phenomenal. And I also run the StoneAgeGamer.com's YouTube channel and their blog. Uh, and then sometimes I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I said before, like we're honored to have Chris make an hour of his day to be with us. I literally, I, li- I literally mean that because you just heard how busy, like how busy that this guy is. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know how you do it. You know, like you know, like, you know, all that, all that would be fine if it was. All of that is enough to keep you busy if you were single and not working. But having a full time job and also being married, 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 and with kids on top of that is just like I don't know how you do it. Honestly. Well, fortunately, but, the the full time job is Stone Age Gamer, so. I get, I got that going for me. It's obviously not all I do for stone age gamer. I do like customer service and stuff like that. But my, my job is directly linked to all the other stuff that I do. So that's, that's part of how I pull it off. And then I just don't sleep as much. as (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Right. Um, Joe, what are you doing these days? Uh, Well, thankfully I only do two podcasts. So, uh, (laughs) That's a plus. Um, I'm super behind on the. That's it. <laughs> I am super behind on the Radical Retro Roundup. Um, we were supposed to do uh, an episode on uh, SmackDown. Just bring it, I believe. Um, but that had to get postponed because I scheduled it for this Saturday. Totally forgetting about WrestleMania. Uh, so, if George, if you happen to listen, thank you for postponing that um and then we were also going to do a uh episode which is a side project that i started where we're covering music that turns 30 um this year so we were going to cover Weezer the blue album and again 
something came up and we couldn't record. So that's been postponed as well. And that I was kind of <laughs> like, eh, you know what? That's extra. So whenever we get through it, it's whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it's there. It's coming. So if you follow this podcast and you follow my podcast, one, thank you. Two, be patient. It's coming. Um, obviously, you can find me on X at uh, J-O-E-S-U-X-3-0. Um, also, if you want to follow the Radical Retro Roundup, it's at uh, Retro Roundup. Jeez. It's underscore Retro underscore Roundup. There we go. Sorry. Um, and then, of course, I have a public Facebook, and there's a public Facebook for the Radical Retro Roundup as well. So definitely check it out. Come follow and do stuff. And I do YouTube too, but it's really not worth mentioning and neither is my Twitch. So, uh, <laughs> if you happen to be interested, it's, uh, you can search Joe Copel. It'll come up. Um, but it's generally at Joe sucks. Um, I think Twitter, Twitch, Twitch is at Joe sucks 69. Um, click the notification button. Occasionally I go live and it's always random and it's always for random amounts of time. I'm really known for like hopping on playing for like an hour and then being like out of here. <laughs> so <laughs> just be prepared for that. But thank you. I'm so amused by it's pronounced Joe sucks Yep, because I keep looking at it. Like it's supposed to be pronounced like French, like Josu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it like every time I see your name, like Joe Sue. That's so strange. I wonder so, if he's French. It never even occurred so to me that it would just be straight up. Phonetic. I'm totally, I'm totally gonna like you know prolong this episode, but I'm gonna throw this out there real quick. Um, I think I have talked about it on this podcast, but um, so uh, you know, when we were in high school, um, I remember we were playing uh, Final Fantasy VII and Gran Turismo in the same weekend. Um, so we had taken turns playing, playing Final Fantasy seven. We were playing, taking turns playing Gran Turismo. I was not very good with Gran Turismo, um, ended up doing so bad that I basically dropped the controller and I was like, I'm done. Like I, I, I completely took the corner, spun out completely. So one of my friends decided to enter my name at the end, uh, with the time with J O E S U X for Joe sucks and it has stuck with me ever since. So that, that name has gone on for almost what, uh, 25 years so far. So it's stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, I mostly just, uh, I, I mostly, I mostly, I mostly just, just keep our group's Facebook page, uh, which you find on Facebook or you can also send me an email directly if you want to like the essays podcast at yahoo.com um compared to these two i keep much more like lower like lower profile <laughs> things so uh but that's how you, um yeah but that's how you can get a hold of me so uh, anyway uh thanks again as always joe uh appreciate you having me here thank you and th thank you uh, and thank you once again uh chris for taking time to be with yes, us thank you chris um you know yeah of course yeah like you know our game list anytime you want um so like you know, anytime you want to like appear an episode just let us know will do All right, good so. enough Thank you again very much to both of you, and uh, and, 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 and for everybody out there listening, thank you for thank you as always for doing so. Stay safe, be well, uh, and we'll catch you again later next time. Take care, all. Bye bye. Nintendo controls eighty percent of the video market, but no matter how you play the game or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Now you're playing with power. Super power.